Hello everyone, it's Scala and I am back with another video. Um, this video, I think I just want to call it setting your intentions for grad school. Basically, <laughs> I think this is a huge change for me and I'm trying to grapple with it. I think from moving to a completely different state, that's gonna be cold, <laughs> to uh, I guess I'm still doing architecture, but something that's a little bit more challenging and learning at a higher level that will prepare me fully for the profession is overwhelming and daunting. So um, just to counteract the stress and whenever I'm feeling a little bit down or worried or imposter syndrome kicks in, which we are not letting it kick in, we're trying not to let it kick in, I've been countering those thoughts with kind of like counter thoughts or the opposite really. So if I'm stressed, I'm trying to counter that stress with either words of affirmation or just instances where I know that I'll be okay in grad school or in the long run in general. So I thought I would do this for myself so I can look back and see these words and see these positive, um, see the positive reinforcement for myself and appreciate that and like recenter myself and i guess the plus of posting this is that i can possibly inspire others i have like five phrases that i've come up with within the last like few weeks so whenever i'm feeling overwhelmed i just think about the counter so the first one is to be honest and yes to be honest in general but really be honest with myself when i'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed about school or i guess an environment that i'm in or even the people that i'm with really try to figure out the root of that um, difficulty, be honest with myself and how I can maybe improve that situation and actually go forward in doing that. A big problem of mine in undergrad and even in high school was I took on so much and I just did not know how to say no. I didn't really know how to be honest with myself and tell myself that I did not have time to take on like three different leadership positions while at the same time being a resident assistant and trying to figure out my math, um, well, yeah, trying to apply to my master's program while also still being a full-time architecture student. Like, it just did not, I couldn't be honest with myself to say that you do not, you are not able to allot all this time to something, even if you're passionate about it, even if you care so much about the topic, sometimes you just need to take a step back and go to the events when you have the time to, rather than take that leadership role and overwhelm and stress yourself out. And I think this is a really important thing because in grad school, I'm hoping to do research. I'm hoping to meet new people. I'm hoping to stay in tune with my faith. And I need to make sure that I first take care of myself and find the things that I enjoy and maybe not just not lead them, you know? Just give myself time. So that's my first intention, to be honest with myself. My second is to seek faith. So Jesus has really just <laughs> been a stable part of my life constantly for, for literally my entire life. I've been Catholic since the day I was born basically. Um, and I just know that through his intervention, he is a light in the darkness. So whenever I'm feeling down, he's the one to go to. So cultivating my faith in grad school is extremely important for my mental, spiritual, I guess even physical health, <laughs> the distance it takes to walk to church, I guess. But just to be able to say that no matter what, God has got this. The litany of powerlessness has been a beautiful one for me. And I'm currently doing a novena, the surrender novena, which my family's doing together. and just to realize how little control i actually have in this life yes i applied to harvard yes i got in there's a truck probably the trash can i don't know if you can hear all of these but we're gonna keep going <laughs> there's um oh i lost my train of thought yes i applied to harvard yes i worked on my portfolio and my essays and everything i worked so hard to do but i couldn't have done anything without him like if i didn't i would not have this life to even apply <laughs> so to continually bring it back to god and seek those opportunities for faith building um involved in like the catholic and the christian community on campus is really important to me so yes number two is to seek faith Okay, the next one's a pretty important one, to embrace change. Oh, change is hard <laughs> for everyone, of course. But I think for me, I'm, I'm like, I'm okay with doing something completely different, but I have to like recognize and get over that period of, I actually don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like I actually am not the expert here. Like I'm gonna go to Boston. I've only been to once in my entire life. I am worried about how cold it's gonna be. Even though like I'm from Pennsylvania, it's not gonna be like a crazy amount of snow, but I'm worried. <laughs> Just because I'll be walking, walking everywhere. Um, but to embrace a change of like 
not really knowing anyone around, which actually I'm pretty excited about, or just knowing that the things that I'm going to experience are going to be different than what I've experienced in the past. And knowing that that's okay, and it takes time to get used to things. Um, yeah, change is actually really great. Change is going to build, <laughs> help me grow. It's going to build my confidence. It's going to build my skills of adaptation. And it's also just going to allow me to have fun and learn new things. So I am trying to embrace change. And this is like, it sounds like the hardest, but it's actually the one that I'm most excited about, though it's also the one that causes me the most anxiety. <laughs> you know, change needs to pick a side because <laughs> there's a lot going on in my brain whenever I think of like completely going to a new school, completely going to a new environment. I've actually been to Catholic school my entire life, grade school, high school, and even college, the Catholic University of America. So to go to Harvard, a pretty <laughs> secular school, I'd say, um, is also a big change for me and I'm excited about it. I mean, I I just mentioned in the last point that faith is really important to me. So see how I can still cultivate that faith in this completely non, not completely non-Catholic, but primarily non-Christian environment is pretty exciting and scary. You know, we're still working on it. <laughs> Number four is to appreciate the mundane and I I feel like I'm trying to remember why I wrote this down because <laughs> I think in multiple multiple ways I've interpreted this I think in some parts it's like okay I'm doing my master's in architecture but Harvard is literally a four about four year program and looking at the classes it looks exactly like my undergrad like it <laughs> and I've been able to waive some classes but just the thought of being in the same I it, I know it's gonna be different I know but being in the same types of classes over again just is not appealing to me. And I guess it's a point of like, why did I choose more, like maths and architecture if it wasn't going to be appealing to me? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you just do things. But I think I was excited about like the other classes that I can take and substitute or the experiences that I'll have in a completely different school. So I know it goes beyond like taking the same classes again, <laughs> similar classes again. But um, just that idea of Appreciating the fact that I'm gonna at least know some architectural software. I'm in a cohort of students who have never done architecture before, which is super cool. I guess learning from those people who have gone into like different fields in the past, like whether it be engineering or English or just so many different paths than what I did, which is architecture to architecture. Um, appreciating the fact that I, I have the ability to design based on what I've already learned before. Um, in my undergraduate experience. So I guess appreciating the quote unquote mundane is just appreciating the things that I've done before and using that to my advantage as well and helping others along the way, of course. Um, I think another way of interpreting appreciate the mundane is when I actually have nothing to do <laughs> because I have been like constantly doing something new or, you know, going from an undergrad during my senior year to an internship to a fellowship to just something different every time or like finding a way to like hang out with friends and then a different group of friends and I'm gonna go to Boston and know no one I'm gonna be strictly in architecture classes at least probably for the first semester and just in those like simple things just like appreciate the fact that my brain isn't going a million miles a minute which it still might but you know just keeping in mind the, the little moments of peace that I can get Speaking of peace, <laughs> our final and fifth point is to seek peace. And I think this goes really well with just self-care. Um, I didn't really know what self-care was for me for quite a while. I would like get my nails done and I'd be like, oh, this is self-care, but I just didn't care about getting my nails done. They're not even done right now. <laughs> I would like put a face mask on and be like, oh, this is self-care. And I just wouldn't actually be comfortable. <laughs> I would just like scratch off and I would not be able to lay down comfortably while watching a, a show. So it, would, it wouldn't be self-care for me. And I've kind of realized that self-care for me is just taking my time. I give myself like an hour in the morning to just reflect, to pray, to do a little bit of exercise, to stretch. And that brings me so much peace and I'm ready to tackle the day is to get that first one of the day in reading part of the Bible or my day-to-day -day, um, devotionals. And I think making sure that I instill those moments in grad school is going to be tough with the amount of work that I have going on, but it's going to be so necessary for my well-being and for my health in general. Also, something that I'm really hoping to do is to start exercising. So <laughs> I don't really exercise often enough. And I think 
setting aside setting aside that time to for self growth, but also for just maintaining my health in a very intentional way, is gonna bring me a lot of peace. Giving myself um, the time, giving myself time, giving myself the time of day. <laughs> I think instilling those moments of peace and finding them is super important. Those are a summary of the intentions that I really think are important for me straight ahead going into grad school. And I guess we'll see if there, <laughs> there are more that pop up and I'm sure there will be um, based on how I experience um, new things and embrace change and appreciate the mundane and seek peace and find my faith, um, strengthen my faith. I encourage you to do the same if you are feeling overwhelmed or no nervous or imposter syndrome is kicking in. We are not letting imposter syndrome kick in. <laughs> you deserve to be at whatever school you're going to. Um, I recommend that you try this. Just whenever you're feeling stressed, think about the counter. What's gonna bring you peace in that moment? What is causing you stress? And how, if you were to fully experience that in your grad school environment, would you counter that? So yeah, set those intentions and I hope and pray that they go well and I wish you best of luck in your grad school program. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, regardless of what time it is, <laughs> where you're from. <laughs> Bye. Like 10 clubs.